In this video, I take on a brand new 15 minute photo challenge in a field full of poppies. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Here's your host, Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. And today I'm going to be doing a 15 minute photo challenge. So I've come out to this field up here on the South Downs. It is actually the UK, I know it looks like Provence in France. Trust me, it's just outside Brighton, it's not that exotic. And I'm gonna spend 15 minutes just walking along the public footpath here and just seeing what interesting photographs I can find and take. And I'm gonna be really careful because I don't wanna trespass onto the other uh, farmer's field, much as I would love to, but I've gotta respect the, the property. So uh, let's start here and see what we can get. Now, I'm gonna start with the general scenes because often it's, it's easier to do the big stuff and then try and look for the small stuff as time goes on. So there's a beautiful vista down here with the red poppies, some uh, yellow oilseed rape, and a road just beyond. I don't like the road, I'll try and wait for the cars to stop and then we'll grab a shot. So let's just come in here. I'm gonna get as close as I can to the edge of the, uh, the path. Wait for the white van to go by. And get my shot. Fantastic. So today I'm using my Canon uh, 5D Mark II and my 24 to 105 millimeter lens. It's a great all rounder lens, perfect for this kind of 15 minute photo challenge. So another really good use of the 24 millimeter end of this lens is it allows me to have a, a pretty wide angle field of view, but I can stretch it even further by doing one of my favorite things, a panorama. So in aperture priority mode, I'm gonna choose F8 ISO 100. Let's get the camera to figure out the shutter speed and the shutter speed is currently 160th of a second. So I'll switch to manual, 160th, F8, ISO 100. First picture of my panorama, of course. Photograph of my hand so I can see the hand picture in the sequence of shots, and then I can uh, know that the next batch of images are all the panorama. Okay, so let's go. Let's take a panorama sequence. We'll start here. It doesn't matter whether you start on the left or the right. It'll work just fine but what you've got to do is overlap your pictures. So I'm always looking at one side and making sure that whatever is on one side reappears on the next. Okay, let's wander along the footpath and see what other photos we can find. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, this is absolutely lovely. I can't get as close to the poppies as I would like, but um, I've still got a really nice shot here. We've got a, a great little pattern shot and a shot that's all about colour. So let's see what we can get from here. Now, yeah, I can see a little bit of a problem here. The, the foreground, there's some stinging nettles in the foreground and they're just getting into my scene. Ah, well, that's, yeah, okay, I can, I can go. <laughs> I can go higher and hopefully I won't fall in because this could be a very painful experience. But by going higher, I remove these from the scene and let's go there and we get that lovely pattern shot. And it's just two colors just split in half. Very, very simple, but such a, an eye-catching shot. Okay, let's see what else we can find. Oh, here we go. Sure enough, eventually the footpath just moves across a little bit and we can get a lot closer to the poppies. So let's get in there and just take a few pictures. So I'm going to be working in aperture priority mode. Let's see what we can find. Um, well, we can find a lot of poppies, I guess. And uh, oh, there's almost too much to choose from, but let's go in nice and close. Here we go. Sky's taking a little bit of a turn for the worst. It was, it was really nice about, well, five minutes ago. And now, not looking so good. We've got this, this heavy, quite oppressive sky. But, ah, what can you do? So what I'm looking for is one of the little heads just sticking up here and uh, maybe just being proud of the rest, just a little bit higher. And uh, that should give me a, a good chance of getting a good shot because it's, it's sticking clear of the others. But to get it to work, I'm gonna shoot at F4 with a nice shallow depth of field, small number F4, small depth of field. But is f4 the right aperture? I don't know. So I'm also going to take the same shot at f5.6. That's a slightly bigger number, and I get a slightly bigger depth of field. And I'm going to do f8, which is an even bigger number with an 
even bigger depth of field. So what I've done is I've hedged my bets. I've tried to decide not here which is the best aperture, but I'll make that decision back on the computer. Okay, let's just try one more thing because time is really not on my side today. So, well, 15 minutes is 15 minutes. I'm gonna go to F22. I'm gonna go for the widest angle end of my lens and I'm just gonna put the camera right down into the, the poppies. Though I can't see what I'm getting, that's pretty good. Let's just nestle it in. So I've literally got time just for one more shot. Okay, so this bit's a little bit beaten down, so this is somebody's already trampled over this, so I'm just gonna take a few steps towards it because I can see just a couple of the poppies there that I want to get, but I'm gonna go for a really big depth of field. So let's set the camera up now. F22, really big depth of field. That's gonna make my shutter speed incredibly slow, 25th of a second. So to compensate, I'm gonna to need to move up to ISO 800 to really get a, a shutter speed that's the sort of handhold territory. F22 means I can get some really good foreground interest and it'll be these poppies right here. I can go right the way in, as close as my camera will allow me to focus. Okay, so there we go, 15 minutes. Wow, that went really quick. Hopefully I've got some good pictures and I'm gonna show you how I edit my favorite picture right now. So this is the image that I'm going to process. And in this Photoshop section, I'm really gonna take things in a very creative direction. So if you're the sort of photographer who likes their pictures to be photographic through and through, then this is probably a really good time to stop watching this video. Still with me? Okay, that's good, because I'm gonna have some fun with this image and create this oil-painted effect. And remember, photography and fun should go together, as should Photoshop and fun. They go together really, really well. Now, this image is actually very simple, very straightforward to create if you've got Photoshop CS6 or Photoshop CC, because it uses a filter called oil paint. So that's where we're going, but of course it doesn't start like that, it starts like this. And this is the picture that came off the camera, although it started life as a raw file, and I've applied a bit of vibrance and a bit of clarity, not surprisingly. So what I could simply do is go up to filter and go to oil paint and just apply the oil paint effect. So I can grab these sliders and move them up and I'll get a, uh, an oil paint effect. But thing is, if I actually put it to the sort of rough settings where I think I'm gonna be, the sky doesn't quite have the drama that I wanted. Works really well everywhere else, but the sky isn't quite there. So before I apply the oil paint filter, I'm gonna make a copy of the layer, duplicate layer, and I'm gonna to go to filter and filter gallery and just put a bit of, of palette knife onto the picture. Now, nice easy settings, everything to maximum. And what that does is it puts some texture into the sky, which is just a bit blank and a bit bland. And the oil paint filter will pick up on that texture and give me a better result. The only problem is it went absolutely everywhere with palette knife. So all I need to do is get the eraser tool. We'll make the brush a little bit bigger and we'll roughly, and it doesn't have to be accurate, roughly erase along the skyline and then along everything else just to return to the original picture. Okay, and having done that, of course, I've got two layers, so we need to collapse that down into one. So let's go up to layer and just flatten image. Now I'm ready to put my oil paint filter on, but again, I'm gonna put it on its own layer and you'll see why in a second. So layer and duplicate layer, and then I can go back to filter oil paint. So what settings do I use? Well, I keep it really simple with the oil paint. I'll take the stylization all the way up to maximum. I'll take the cleanliness all the way up to maximum. Then I'm gonna come down to the bottom one, which is shine, and that's coming down very low. Sometimes I'll put it on zero. Now, if you do have it on zero, the sliders for scale, bristle detail, and angular direction, it wouldn't matter a jot where you put them because they have no effect with the shine on zero. So I'm just gonna put the shine a little bit higher, just about one, 1 1.2, something like that. And you'll see how that just brings up the edges, particularly on that sky that we were working on in just, just a moment ago. Now things do change slightly. I can change the scale particularly, and I want a little bit of scale in there, just so I have a tiny bit of detail, but not too much. 
bristle detail will have almost no effect at all angular detail will definitely have a, an effect and I'm going to keep that on zero so that's basically it that is everything done just have a quick look around do you like the effect yes I do I'm happy with that hit OK so the reason I've put this on its own separate layer is for two reasons first of all if you decide actually you don't like it you've still got the the picture below so you can always revert back to the original or something close to it but mostly I like to do this because I still want to bring a little bit of the photographic real image through and it can be something really tiny for example just the insides of the poppies so I'm just going to get the eraser tool again you could do a layer mask if you have a more complicated shape and all I'm going to do is just erase back to the original for the insides of those poppies you can actually see the effect is actually gorgeous when you look up close at the oil paint uh, filter you can see how it just pulls the strands through how it adds amazing amounts of texture and detail when you go in really really close absolutely gorgeous okay that pretty much finishes the picture off one last thing to do again just to flatten the image down or make a merged copy if you prefer and then I'm going to go to image adjustments and levels and I often find that once you've applied the filter things don't quite look how you want them so maybe a little bit more contrast by adding a, a little bit more to the levels might be exactly what you re require and I think that works beautifully so there you go there is my rather artistically painted version of a field of poppies just outside Brighton Okay, there you go, 15 minute photo challenge. What a great location and some great photographs, hopefully, as well. Now, if you wanna see more videos from me and other people here on Adorama TV, then all you've gotta do is click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.